Home Assistant's fourth release of 2025 is here, with 2025.4 arriving on April 2nd. The big new features this month include a new type of dashboard and cards, improvements to using voice assistants and LLMs, and much more. I'll walk through all the big updates so you know what to expect and how your smart home might benefit. Just remember that I'm testing the beta release, so it's possible that the final release may look a little bit different. My name is Michael Lane, and this channel is all about how tech can make you more productive, especially through home automation, with new videos every week. This release brings an exciting update for your dashboard. A new experimental feature makes it possible for a dashboard to be automatically generated based on the areas in your home. From the overview page, you can see what Home Assistant believes to be the most important information about each area. You can click on the area's header to go to a subpage with even more details about everything in that area. To give it a try, select areas when you add a new dashboard. Just remember that it is experimental and the developers are looking for your feedback to continue to improve it. This release also brings a new kind of card for your dashboard called a clock card. As the name implies, it just shows the time. There are a few time formats and sizes to choose from. This could be a nice addition if you display your dashboard on a wall-mounted tablet. There are also several improvements to the voice assistant experience in Home Assistant. Now, a setup wizard will guide you through the process of setting up a compatible voice assistant device like Home Assistant Preview Edition. This should make it easier to make the right choice based on your language, device type, and capabilities so you get the best possible voice experience. I really like when they add features like this they just make it easier for folks to get started with different aspects of Home Assistant. If you have tried to have a conversation with a voice assistant connected to an LLM like ChatGPT or Gemini, well, it's a bit rough. You have to say the wake word a lot to ensure they keep listening to you. This is now fixed. If an LLM responds with a question that will be detected and the conversation will remain open without the need to repeat the wake word. This works with all LLMs supported by Home Assistant. I am so glad to see this as it was one of the pitfalls that I had noted in my video that tested out different voice hardware. You can now build automations that initiate an interaction with an ESP Home based voice assistant like the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition without having to say the wake word. For example, if you have an automation that lets you know if the door was left unlocked at night, you can now have the voice assistant ask if you'd like to lock it, and you can just respond yes or no. Or let's say you have an automation that sets a thermostat a certain way when you arrive home after work. Now you could also have the voice assistant ask if you want to play some music, and you can just tell it what you'd like. There are tons of possibilities with this, and I love the flexibility it offers. Maybe you'd like to have music play from an automation whenever you come home, but maybe you don't want it 100% of the time. Now you're in control, it can have a play only when you want based on how you're feeling. Features like this are cool, but it can be jarring to have a voice assistant just start talking to you out of nowhere. I actually discussed this in a recent video about how to get better text-to-speech announcements and Home Assistant with integrations like Chime TTS and Eleven Labs. Well, now you can add a pre-announced sound when starting a conversation or playing an announcement. Finally, a few miscellaneous items to note. If you subscribe to Home Assistant Cloud, you can set up new hardware for Home Assistant by restoring from a Home Assistant Cloud backup. For the power users, there are a series of new template functions to make it easier to work with data. And you can now create parent-child relationships between devices and your energy configuration. This may be helpful if you have a sensor monitoring the energy consumption of a whole circuit plus individual devices on that circuit that you want to monitor. Those are the major changes, but there's also a bunch of updates to existing integrations, including OpenAI Conversation Agent, SmartThings RoboRock, and RealLink to name a few. I'll leave a link to the release notes in the video description so you can check them out. As always, review the list of new integrations and breaking changes to see what matters to you. Otherwise, that's what you can expect with the Home Assistant 2025.4 release in April. Let me know if this was helpful by giving it a like, leaving a comment, and subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.